Wikipedia officially launched for the first time on the 15th of January 2001, and since then it's served as the go-to resource for information on just about any subject. Students and school children use it for research when they're completing assignments. Internet users use it for research on a wide variety of topics, and even contains a wealth of information on celebrities, politicians, and sports stars. But some pages on Wikipedia are not for the faint of heart. They cover more serious and macabre subjects, such as abductions, paranormal encounters, serial killers, unexplained events from all through history, and people who have mysteriously disappeared, never to be seen or heard from again. Number 10. Some people say that Mary Sweeney, also known by the names Maria, Marion, Anna, Annie Ricks, and Kit, to name but a few, was born in St. Paul, Minnesota, though no one is exactly sure of her birthplace, since it's been said that she was born in Stevens Point, Wisconsin. The same can be said for her birth year. Some resources state that she was born in 1858, while others list the date as either 1859 or 1862. But what's certain is that by the time she was in her mid-twenties, she was already getting into trouble with the law. In 1882, it's said that she stole a dress from her employer, and by the time the next three years had passed, she'd been admitted to an asylum before being released again. At this point, she was working as a school teacher and had gotten married before having two children named Philomena and Geraldine. It's unknown how it occurred, but at one stage in her life, Mary suffered an injury that caused a change in her personality and behavior. This is when things started getting truly strange, and the authorities had a hard time dealing with her. One day, Mary suddenly started breaking windows, not only in her own house, but everywhere she went. She would pick up items that she could find, whether it was a rock, a stick, or a random item, and hurl it through the nearest window. She would later state that she enjoyed the sound of the windows jingling, but this wasn't the only behavior that caused concern to those around her. She'd started drinking heavily and using illegal substances. She stated that these substances helped calm her nerves, though no one knew why they needed calming, since she didn't lead a particularly stressful life. Though it's thought that her injury may have contributed to this state of mind. In an effort to deal with her behavior, the police would lock her up in jail, send her to asylums and hospitals, or pay for her to get a train and leave town. But Mary was proud of the fact that she could escape from just about any hospital or asylum in a matter of days, and eventually the decision was made to have her mental health assessed. This did little to explain her behavior though, as it was quickly determined that she was completely sane and that the window smashing, which happened when she was seized by what she called a craze, was the exception to otherwise acceptable behavior. When Edward Schofield, the then governor of Wisconsin, heard about Mary's whims in 1897, he had her committed to Mendota Asylum for the Insane, where she remained for a few years before being released. Mary's penchant for smashing windows had slowly started to fade, but it had been replaced by an uncontrollable urge to roam the countryside. But she kept breaking windows in order to get free train tickets from the authorities. She then wed a man named Anderson, and they had a son together. But when he found out that she'd been in a mental institution for a few years, he went his own way. Her son would be admitted to a home in 1912 for reasons unknown, and would eventually be charged with desertion during World War I. He spent some time in jail for this before being paroled, and by 1925, Mary was said to be looking for him. But it isn't known whether they ever reunited. The last thing known about her son is that he mysteriously disappeared from his workplace in 1924 and Mary's fate after that remains unknown. Number 9. Another rather disconcerting page on Wikipedia is named List of Common Misconceptions. Here you'll find entry after entry of facts that many people consider to be common knowledge, but are completely untrue. One example of this is the misconception that the brand Adidas is short for All Day I Dream About Sports, or All Day I Dream About Soccer. The fact is, the company was named after its founder, Adolf Dassler, who was also known as Addy. Then there's the misconception that Santa Claus's image as a jolly elderly man with a white beard and large belly, dressed in a red outfit, was created by Coca-Cola as a marketing trick. In reality, that very image was already well known in the Americas since the 1800s. 
The next entry deals with a common belief that Twinkies will remain unspoiled and perfectly edible for years, and according to some people, decades. But Twinkies have an expiration date just like any other food, and are only good to eat for about 45 days. We might be accustomed to the fortune cookies we receive when eating Chinese food, but not many people know that they were actually invented in Japan, after which they made their way to the US and the rest of the world. They're actually considered to be quite a rarity in China, which comes as quite a surprise to most people. There's also a common belief that agricultural scientist George Washington Carver is the one who invented peanut butter, but this is far from true since it's known that the Aztecs ate peanut butter as early as the 1400s. It's likely that people have this misconception due to the fact that Carver found hundreds of uses for peanuts, but he wasn't its inventor. One fact that everyone should be made aware of is that there's no law that states someone needs to wait 24 hours before reporting someone is missing. This misconception has hindered many missing person cases, and since the first 72 hours of a case are often considered to be the most crucial, it would be nonsensical to waste an entire day that could be used for furthering the investigation. In the world of sports, there's a misconception that the word golf is short for gentlemen only, ladies forbidden. But the word is thought to have originated from other languages. In Dutch, the word golf means club. In Scottish, the word golf means to strike something and the word likely originated from one of these. Then there's the common belief that the Egyptian pyramids are the result of slave labor, but this simply isn't true. According to this page on Wikipedia, the pyramids were constructed by skilled workmen and farmers who are not only well paid and fed, but whose income from this was exempt from taxation. Lastly, the belief that King Tut's tomb carried a curse with it thanks to an inscription that was found when it was unearthed is completely false. No one had ever spoken about a curse on the tomb until the 1900s, when sensationalist journalists included this trope in their reporting, and since then the curse has been depicted in several movies, books, and TV series. Number 8. The Gibson Desert in Australia has been the site of the demise of many an explorer who were attempting to learn as much about the desolate area as possible. But not many people know that it was named for one of those men. Alfred Gibson. In 1874, Gibson was part of an expedition led by Ernest Giles, who explored much of Western and Southern Australia. And in this instance, his aim was to cross the Western Australian deserts from the east to the west. Gibson and Giles had met previously, though Giles only had a vague recollection of this. Before Giles could set out on his journey though, he was approached by Gibson, who reminded them of their first meeting, and who then asked if he could join his expedition. Giles asked whether he knew how to shoe and ride a horse, and reminded him that he would almost certainly have to deal with the lack of food and water, and that there would be many dangers along the way, many of which could easily claim his life. But Gibson was undaunted, and even though Giles didn't think he was the best man for the job, he was allowed to join his crew since there was a serious shortage of volunteers. Gibson seemed passionate about his project, and thanks to his young age of 23, was likely to be an asset to the project. But at one point in the journey, they ran out of water while scouting ahead, and Gibson decided to return to their depot, leaving Giles behind without a horse. He took a compass and his horse with him, but it's believed that he somehow got lost as he never returned and was never seen again. It's likely that he succumbed to the desert heat along with dehydration and possibly hunger, but this remains mere speculation as we'll likely never learn what his actual fate was after setting out alone. He's one of many explorers who are thought to have lost their lives in Australian deserts. The German explorer, Ludwig Leichhardt, set off into the Australian desert in 1848, and he too was never seen or heard from again. At the time, there were rumors that he and his party were accosted by a group of indigenous people who ended all of their lives before pilfering their belongings, which were later found scattered as far as 2,500 miles apart. In 1896, explorer Larry Wells led a group known as the Calvert Scientific Exploring Expedition and set off into the desert to find what had happened to Leichhardt and his party. He made use of camels to traverse the terrain, but at one point in the journey, two men and his party decided to go off on their own to do unrelated research, and they were eventually found deceased about eight months later. Number 7. 
While browsing Wikipedia, you may come across a page entitled Edward Mordrake. While some people may be familiar with this case, it still isn't known whether he actually existed, but the story is enough to send chills down most people's spines. People first read about Mordrake in 1859, when an article called The Wonders of Modern Science was published in the Boston Post, though it should be noted that it was penned by the well-known fiction author Charles Hildreth. The piece discussed what he referred to as human freaks, people who either possessed features that other people did or who lacked them. One example is a description that he gave of a woman who was likened to a mermaid since she had a fish tail. Another case described a man who didn't have a normal body but that of a spider. Another man was said to be half human, half crab, but these accounts should be taken with a pinch of salt, since his work wasn't backed up by any sources or real facts. But his description of Mordrake is one that just might keep you up at night. According to the article, Mordrake was born in the 1800s, and surprisingly he was very good looking with people often describing him as having the same features as Antinous from ancient Greece. He was said to have been well-mannered and intelligent, but he had one feature that most people found terrifying, and in some cases repulsive, according to Hildreth. While Mordrake seemed like a normal man at first glance, he also had a second face that was present on the back of his head. While we know that vestigial twins exist, this was said to be a unique case, since the second face was alive and sentient, and furthermore was the face of a woman. It was also intelligent in its own way, and could express emotions that were usually in direct contrast to the emotions Mordrake was experiencing. When he smiled, the second face could be seen sneering, and when he felt sad, it had a smile on its face. This second face couldn't speak, didn't eat or drink, but it was somehow able to communicate with Mordrake, much to his dismay. He told doctors that it kept him up at night, whispering things to him that he described as things that they only speak of in hell. He repeatedly visited doctors and asked that the devil twin, as he called it, be removed for his own sanity. But no doctor was brave enough to take on the operation, and so he was forced to live with it. His situation eventually took a toll on his mental health, and he became a recluse, staying in his room without any contact from the outside world. Here, he's said to have gradually lost his mind. His family tried to intervene, but he refused to see or speak to them. And when he passed away, he left a note behind, asking that the face be destroyed, since he was worried that it would continue its whispers while he was in his grave. Mordrake is said to have been buried in an unknown area, and since his grave contained no headstone, this legend, no matter how fictional it may be, lives on today, not only on Wikipedia, but in some scientific journals that have published the account when discussing vestigial twins or parasitic twins. Number 6. The entry of sleep paralysis is yet another Wikipedia page that causes people some discomfort, since it discusses a state of sleep during which people are awake and conscious, but are for some reason unable to move or talk. This is a very real phenomenon that leaves its sufferers not only baffled, but often terrified, since they're unable to explain why this happens, and hence it's thought in many cultures to be the results of something supernatural. During one of these episodes, the affected person is completely aware of what's going on around them, but they're unable to respond in any way. Added to this is the terrifying possibility that they may start hallucinating, hearing sounds, and seeing things that aren't really there. Some people have reported hearing sounds as mundane as a continuous buzzing, humming, or the sound of static, but there are some other far more terrifying accounts. Some people are adamant that they heard someone whispering or speaking to them, while others have heard the sound of an intense roar. Another terrifying possibility is that they'll see someone unfamiliar standing in the room with them, or worse, a dark, unmoving figure that seems to watch them while they're completely paralyzed. There have also been many reports that during one of these episodes, the sufferer feels as if someone is lying or sitting on their chest, making it hard for them to breathe and further causing them great distress. It's mainly thanks to this symptom that some people believe it's caused by creatures called the sleep paralysis demons, or in some cultures, night hags. It's easy to understand why someone would think this could be supernatural, since they feel like they're being watched by a dark shape that's stopping them from breathing properly, speaking, or even moving. But strangely, as soon as the episode ends, their bodily functions return to normal. In some cases, people have reported feeling as if they were being dragged out of their beds by some unseen force, 
or that they experience something akin to an out-of-body experience, finding that they can suddenly fly. Some people have also reported it feeling a tingling sensation, like mild electricity, vibrations, or numbness throughout their bodies. But these always seem to disappear as soon as they wake us properly. To make matters even more mysterious, no one has been able to find the cause for sleep paralysis, despite hundreds of studies being conducted throughout the years. The best we've been able to do so far is come up with a few theories. Some experts believe that sleep paralysis occurs when REM sleep and waking states overlap for reasons unknown, resulting in parasomnia. Thus, the sufferer feels that they're awake and asleep at the same time. It's also been suggested that it's the result of neural functions that are out of sync, specifically those that control our states of sleep. One neural function tells the brain that the sufferer is asleep, while another reports that they're awake, and hence they're conscious but unable to move. While its causes are still being studied, it's been noted that sleep paralysis might occur when someone is suffering from sleep deprivation, and luckily it doesn't result in any medical complications after the fact, though it has been associated with pre-existing narcolepsy. In China, the condition is referred to as ghost oppression, and in Newfoundland, it's called the old hag syndrome. In Mexico, some people believe that a deceased person has climbed on top of them while they're asleep, rendering them immobile. Number 5. The Flatwoods Monster, according to Wikipedia, is also known as Braxy. The Braxton County Monster and the Phantom of Flatwoods, and it describes a creature that was reportedly spotted in West Virginia on the 12th of September, 1952. On that evening, at around 7.15 p.m., brothers Edward and Fred May, along with their friend Tom Heyer, were playing on the grounds of their school when they saw a mysterious red pulsating light streaking across the sky in West Virginia. As they watched it travel, they realized it had landed on a nearby farm that belonged to a man named G. Bailey Fisher, and they immediately ran to the brother's house, where they told their mother what they had seen. Together, they ran to the area where they saw the light landing, and were soon joined by a few other boys, one of which had his dog with him. At the front of the search party was Gene Lemon, a member of the National Guard. As they climbed a hill to get to the landing site, Lemon suddenly reported that he could see a set of glowing eyes that were looking at them from a nearby tree. He peered into the darkness to try and make out what he was looking at, but he then let out a blood-curdling scream and fell over backward. He said that he'd seen a 10-foot tall creature that he described as a monster that had a green glowing face and a red body. He believed that it had claws instead of hands, but he stated that he wasn't sure since the night was filled with a heavy mist. The group later claimed that the creature had a spade-shaped head and seemed to be wearing a dress made out of a material that resembled metal. Its eyes glowed orange and to them it seemed as though it was floating a few inches off the ground. They then realized that the air was filled with a strange, pungent smell, and in the background, they could see the pulsating light that had streaked across the night sky, just a short while earlier. Before they had time to react, the monsters suddenly let out a loud hiss and started gliding towards the group, prompting them to turn and flee as quickly as they could. The group was traumatized by the event, and some experienced medical conditions afterward. A few people reported suffering from throat irritations and nausea that lingered for days after the incident. While it's been speculated that the group may have been exposed to mustard gas, authorities at the time didn't take these reports seriously and decided that they were likely the result of hysteria. Nevertheless, the police went to the site and conducted a search, but they reported that everything seemed normal. But this was not the first time that this strange creature was seen, according to some reports. A resident of Heaters, about five miles from Flatwoods, Audra Harper, reported that she and a friend had been walking in the woods close to her house while they were on their way to a store, when they noticed what looked like a fireball on a nearby hill. At first, they thought nothing of it, but when she looked back at the hill, the fire had disappeared, and instead she saw a tall figure silhouetted against the sky. They didn't investigate further and instead decided to flee. The day after the boys encountered the creature, George and Edith Snitowski were traveling by car between Clay and Braxton counties when the car's engine inexplicably shut off on a deserted road. The car wouldn't start again no matter what they tried, and they then became aware of a foul odor in the air. Suddenly, they were surrounded by a bright light, and they saw a 10-foot-tall creature levitating before their very eyes. The creature was described as akin to a lizard, 
It then turned, ran its hand across the hood of the car, and floated away into the nearby woods. They were then able to start the car's engine and drove away at speed. It's been suggested that this creature was actually a barn owl that was sighted after a meteor streaked across the sky, but this remains mere speculation. Number 4. When it comes to eating disorders, there are many people who will state that a French man named Terhard, who lived from 1772 to 1798, had the worst case ever recorded. When we think of these disorders, most people associate them with people who struggle to eat, but Terhar had quite the opposite problem. He served France as a soldier during the War of the First Coalition, which ranged from 1792 to 1797, and during his service, he and his fellow soldiers were well provided for. But the food that was provided for Terhar was nowhere near enough. He was on several occasions seen eating waste heaps and gutters since he was almost always hungry, and no amount of food provided to him could satisfy his need for more. This meant that he was almost always looking for food, and soon he lost so much weight that he had to be sent to a hospital for treatment. Here, doctors tried to find a reason for his condition, and on one occasion he was tested. He was given a meal that could feed 15 people, but he finished it in a single sitting without any problem. It was also reported that when he was admitted to hospital again, on a later occasion, he snuck out and was found eating from a butcher shop's waste area. When he was unable to find any sustenance, he would eat lizards and eels, but no matter how much he ate, he remained underweight. While serving in the military, it became clear that something had to be done, and he received four times the normal food rations, but even then he remained as hungry as ever. He was then sent to have his mental state analyzed, but it was found that he was completely sane, and no one could find a reason for his ferocious appetite. Upon hearing of Terhar, a general decided that he should be put to work as a spy. He was ordered to swallow important documents before traveling to a certain destination, where they would be retrieved. While this may sound farcical, the plan was approved, but didn't quite go to plan. On his very first mission, Terhar was captured by the enemy and he was eventually sent back to France after being assaulted. By this point, he'd had enough of his condition and stated that he would do whatever it took to lead a normal life. But doctors couldn't cure him of his condition, no matter what they tried, and he was eventually thrown out of the hospital when it came to light that he'd been sneaking out. For the next four years, no one knew what had become of him, but he was eventually spotted again in Versailles but he had contracted a severe case of tuberculosis, and a short while later, it would claim his life. Before he passed, he stated that he'd swallowed a golden fork a few years prior, and he believed this to be the cause of his failing health, but his autopsy revealed that no fork was present. To this day, it isn't known what drove Terhar to such hunger, and while a few other similar cases have been noted through the years, the condition remains a mystery. Number 3. When it comes to the paranormal side of Wikipedia, many people feel that the entry regarding shadow people is among the most terrifying, with some stating that they've seen figures in their own homes. Those who have had these encounters report that they often see a figure that's seemingly made up of nothing but shadow moving in the periphery of their vision, never allowing them to get a direct look at them. In many of these cases, people describe the shadow as that of a person, but much larger than it should be. They're also reported as moving quickly and with arrested movements before they suddenly disappear, often into mirrors and walls or merging with other shadows. Some of these figures are said to be solid, like a human, while others appear to be a mist. It's also been reported that some shadow people have eyes that can easily be seen in stark contrasting darkness of their bodies. These eyes could be white, red, green, or blue, but it's said that those with eyes move faster than others. They're also reportedly more intelligent and move about soundlessly to avoid detection. While most people who encounter a shadow person feel that they're in danger and that they're evil creatures, others have stated that they regard them as something similar to a guardian angel who's watching over them. Some people claim that each shadow person has its own personality, just like humans do, and some are evil, while others are either indifferent or act as guardians. Some witnesses have stated that when they looked into the creature's eyes, it suddenly let out a scream that was similar to static or a howling wind. During some encounters, witnesses are left immobilized and the shadow person will simply stand in front of them silently, staring at them attentively as if they're being studied. 
According to some reports, they can often be seen in hospitals near people who are ill or on the verge of passing away. Shadow people have also been mentioned in the same breath as sleep paralysis, as some people have reported that the creatures would climb onto their chests while they're unable to move, causing them to struggle to breathe. Strangely, people from many different parts of the world have reported seeing one particular shadow person, known as the Hat Man. He's described as a solid shadow with either red or black eyes, who wears a wide-brimmed hat and what looks like a long trench coat. As if this isn't disconcerting enough, He's said to emit an aura of malevolence, and he's often reported as seeming to curiously study those that encounter him. While most people don't know what he is or where he came from, others are adamant that he's the devil himself. It's been suggested by some theorists that these creatures may be extraterrestrials that are attempting to hide their identities by appearing as shadows. Those who see it as an evil entity claim that it can be chased away by prayer or by ordering it to leave in the name of Jesus. Number 2. While Wikipedia is by no means a reliable source of the diagnosing of medical conditions, it does contain a massive amount of information on existing conditions, one of the most bizarre and terrifying being Cotard's Syndrome. This is a syndrome that affects a person's mental state, and they end up convinced that they either no longer exist, that they've passed away, or that they're inexplicably missing some of their vital organs. Studies have revealed that around 45% of people suffering from Cotard's syndrome believe that they're no longer alive, while the remaining 55% feel that they've somehow become immortal. In one case, a woman known only as Mademoiselle X suffered from the condition, and she claimed that she was missing several parts of her body. Further to this were her claims that she never needed to eat since she'd been condemned to eternal damnation. She would eventually pass away from starvation. In another case, a 65-year-old man who worked as a school teacher started feeling depressed one day without explanation. This sadness seemed to be worse in the morning after he woke up, and soon it had affected him so badly that he started struggling to socialize with other people. He struggled to sleep and often felt anxious without reason. He had very little appetite and eventually started feeling that something disastrous was about to happen, often stating that the world and everything in it was about to be destroyed. He told his family that his house's walls were cracking and that it was going to collapse on top of him. He felt that some of his organs, including his brain, were no longer functioning, and he worried that his condition might be passed to others like an infection. When he was eventually admitted to a hospital, he was found to be severely depressed and that he'd started believing that he'd passed away some time ago. His depression was treated with various medications, resulting in his mental state returning to normal after seven weeks. Another sufferer of Cotard syndrome, a 62-year-old woman named Mrs. A, reported to doctors that she'd been suffering from bipolar disorder for about 35 years, but that it had been under control with medication, until she started becoming convinced that some of her family members didn't actually exist, despite the fact that she recognized them. As with the previous case, she became convinced that her house would one day collapse, and when she revealed this to her family, they decided to book her into a hospital for treatment. She also had become mute at this point. Here, it was revealed that she believed she was missing some of her organs, and she thought she'd passed away. She refused to eat since she didn't think it was necessary for someone who was no longer alive to do so, and soon her limbs started to become rigid. She was found to be severely dehydrated and depressed, coupled with anemia and a vitamin D deficiency. Doctors were able to treat her condition with medication and a series of electroshock therapies that steadily caused an improvement in her condition, and after some time she returned to normal and was able to live a normal life. To this day, it isn't known what causes Cotard syndrome, but thankfully we have a good idea of how to treat it. Number 1. Wikipedia contains an entry about a road in West Milford, New Jersey that's said to be extremely haunted, named Clinton Road. The road starts at Route 23 and ends about 10 miles to the north of Upper Greenwood Lake. Though some people, such as members of law enforcement, believe these tales are merely the result of overactive imaginations that are stimulated by the road's dark and desolate nature, others believe that there's something very sinister about the road and its surrounding woods. The first of these areas is called Ghost Boy Bridge. According to folklore, anyone can contact the spirit of a young boy if they were to place a quarter in the middle of the road, as long as it's placed on one of the road's bridges. 
it said that the quarter will be brought back to that person by the boy's spirit. But if they remain in the area and dare to look over the edge of the bridge, they'll be pushed into the water of Clinton Brook. Others have reported seeing a girl driving a phantom Chevrolet Camaro on this stretch of road and it's said that it's the spirit of a woman who lost her life in a crash there in 1988. Some people claim that one merely needs to mention the incident while on the road for her to appear. This isn't the only phantom vehicle on this road, though. Some people claim to have seen a ghostly pickup truck driving on the road, while others see nothing but a set of floating headlights. On some occasions, it's said these headlights will suddenly turn around and start chasing the witnesses' vehicles only to disappear into thin air when they reach the end of Clinton Road. Then there's the legend of the park rangers. Several people who have camped in the area reported seeing these two rangers close to Terrence Pond, and they then realized that they're the spirits of two rangers who passed away in the woods in 1939. Some visitors reported seeing strangely dressed people in these woods, who would simply stare at them without saying a word, before suddenly disappearing before their very eyes. In some instances, people would point these people out to their companions, who then discover that they aren't able to see the figures at all. Many people have stated that they've encountered inexplicable creatures while traveling on Clinton Road. One of these is thought to be an albino wolf dog that was the result of a failed experiment, and others have reported seeing other animal hybrids roaming around the area. Lastly, there's the legend of the phantom hitchhiker. This is said to be the spirit of a young girl, who suddenly appears by the side of the road, trying to hitch a ride with passing motorists. People are often taken aback by the fact that a girl would be out there alone, but when they approach her with their cars, she suddenly disappears, leaving them terrified. While most people believe these tales to be mere folklore, many others are adamant about what they saw, and they try to avoid Clinton Road whenever possible. Thank you guys so much for watching. If you liked this video, be sure to hit that like button. Also, don't forget to subscribe and click that notification bell to keep up to date with all of our future uploads. But my name is Ty Knotts, and I'll catch you guys in the next video.